Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and today we're going to be taking a look once again at ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln and its future forecast towards Exmouth and Western Australia. And then we're going to take a look at some thunderstorms that are expected to fire up across New South Wales and Queensland this weekend. A bit to get through in this update, so make sure you stick around to the end. If you are brand new to the channel, then please consider subscribing, it really does help us out, and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. So you can see ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln up here, northeast or northwest actually of Broome and uh, Derby. It's firing up some pretty decent convection by the looks of things. Some strong thunderstorms are really starting to move around at centre and it looks like it's actually starting to rotate them quite nicely. So this is actually getting quite close to becoming a tropical cyclone in my opinion. We probably just don't have the winds yet. Uh, maximum wind observations around where this system is about 30 to 40 kilometres an hour. That's on Adele Island, which is a long way away from the storm centre, but still... Um, We'll be looking out for these wind observations and seeing what they do over the course of today. I'm very interested to see what Rowley Shoals does throughout the course of today and seeing what jumps that those wind observations uh, go to. So if you are keeping a keen eye on this system, then take a look at what the wind speeds on Rowley Shoals are. You can find all of that information on the Broom Radar and also at the Bureau of Neurology's website. So we'll take a look at the wind forecast here. We won't waste any more time looking at the system. Now, the forecast has been backed off once again, but I do feel that it might have been backed off just a little bit too much at this point. The Bureau of Meteorology calling for a Category 2 strength peak from this tropical cyclone. I reckon that a Category 2 strength peak is very probable at this point. I'm going to be in line with the Bureau of Meteorology um, for their forecast. I just think the forecast models might have dropped their forecasts a little bit too much, considering that right now we do have a fully formed tropical low, as you can see here. It is an organized system and as we keep playing these runs through, you can see it does actually intensify throughout the course of today and probably becomes a cyclone by this evening or maybe early tomorrow morning. But you can see by 5 p.m. local time tonight, it passes straight over the top of Rowley Shoals and the islands adjacent to it. So I'm gonna be very interested to see what the wind observations on Rowley Shoals are. Expected to peak out at around 50 kilometers an hour. So if they're any stronger than 50 kilometers an hour, that means that the storm has been underestimated by these forecast models. So we'll be looking out for those wind observations very closely and information will be released on this channel as necessary. Um, going through a little bit of a rough time right now in terms of work schedules and so forth. I'm working a 42 hour week this week so I'm uh, on a bit of pressure on to get an updates out. It is quite a bit of a challenge uh, so I do apologise if I can't get them out in a timely manner. I am trying my best but still expect a morning update every single day of the week. You can see as we play this run through further uh, by Friday morning it looks like it is a proper cyclone at this point, but it really doesn't intensify too much beyond that, despite the very good conditions that it has. And my theory for that is the models haven't actually picked up on the storm's size. It's going to be a very small system, which means it will be able to intensify suddenly and unexpectedly. And you can see as it gets towards Exmouth, it looks like um, a strengthening system in the terms of uh, the pressure is still dropping right up towards landfall, albeit very slowly indeed. But as far as uh, Exmouth, uh, in terms of a lateral location, as far south as Exmouth, you can see, you can expect intensification from ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln. It will likely be intensifying right down to Exmouth. And if it does manage to play its cards right, there is nothing riding off a severe tropical cyclone at this point. Now, models in the Bureau of Meteorology inclined to say that Coral Bay is a landfall site right now. Coral Bay or Carnarvon, anywhere between Coral Bay or Carnarvon, is probably going to experience a landfall at this point here. Um, it's a very remote part of Western Australia, but it's a big tourist hotspot. There will likely be a lot of grey nomads up in this part of um, Western Australia at this point, considering it's out of school holiday season. Uh, so likely going to be a lot of uh, tourists up here. Make sure you are taking the necessary precautions here. It's not going to be a very strong tropical cyclone category three at the most, and most of the buildings up here are built to withstand category three strength cyclone conditions. But I can tell you boats and caravans are not built to withstand even category one strength tropical cyclone. So if you're on a motor yacht or if you're in a caravan or in a mobile home up here, then it is best to evacuate, get out of there and head further inland. There's plenty of beautiful locations just a little bit further inland. Get yourself maybe 100 or 150 kilometers inland to really escape the worst of the wind gusts and conditions. Make sure that you stay close to paved roads as well and well built up areas because this storm will likely drop quite a significant amount of rainfall which will result in flash and riverine flooding and the more remote roads uh, will certainly be cut off and be in need of repairs or uh, just a bit of drying out so don't get yourself on some kind of uh, out of their track uh, that's probably not a good idea 
uh, to do, considering that the roads will likely fail in a situation like this. Now, it looks like uh, landfall is now Saturday, maybe about midday or so, Sunday lunchtime by the looks of things. Uh, the GFS model has backed off the forecast for a landfall at all. In fact, they're calling for a landfall down in Shark Bay about 24 hours later. And I think the Access G3 is kind of in the middle here, calling for that landfall around Shark Bay Saturday evening or so. In fact, they're calling for it on top of Carnarvon, but it still does bring some relatively strong winds around Carnarvon or so. I'm not looking forward to this because this is just going to drive temperatures up tomorrow for Perth. Um, this will drive a very nice trough down the coastline. It looks like temperatures will once again heat up for Perth, um, but that's a bit of a side note there. Um, but I would say landfall Saturday afternoon. It could be early afternoon, it could be late afternoon. The details still need to be ironed out here. And we'll know that in about uh, maybe a day or so. And that's because the storm's going to be coming in at an angle to the coastline, which means any wobble in the track will bring the storm uh, maybe 100 kilometres up the coast and maybe at a landfall 12 hours earlier or 100 kilometres down the coast and a landfall 12 to 16 hours later. So we'll be watching this quite closely. Wobbles make a big difference in terms of where the storm's going to be tracking. And it's also going to matter when this storm decides to make its turn uh, for, towards the south or the southeast. I'm expecting it to make its turn probably about here. It'll be significantly far enough offshore to really um, for Caratha, Carnarvon and Roburn to escape the worst conditions. That means that those ports won't be shut down which is great uh, because we don't want those ports shut down. That will just blow up the West Australian economy or at least what's left of it. Um, but yeah, when this storm does make its turn that will have a big impact on the forecast landfall location and also the forecast intensity. I do genuinely believe that this will be intensifying, albeit quite slowly right up towards landfall. And considering the storm's expected small size, if we were to take it back to uh, Friday afternoon, this is the Axis G3, which have completely dropped the possibility of a strong cyclone. So that's very interesting. Because of this storm's small size, it will likely be able to get to a stronger intensity um, than what we could be expecting. Then again, there's also a good chance that it gets absolutely blasted by say wind shear or something or other, uh, and it completely fails on getting to a high intensity. So there's a little bit of a more uncertainty now than there was say yesterday or the day before, considering there's a lot more factors in the forecast. There is a cyclone watch in effect for locations between Caratha and Carnarvon. If you live between Caratha and Carnarvon, it is best to be preparing for a tropical cyclone now. Prepare for gale force winds within the next 24 to 48 hours. If you live between Onslow and Carnarvon, expect severe tropical cyclone conditions. They are very unlikely to happen, especially around Onslow and Carnarvon, but if this storm is to intensify drastically throughout today, it will likely come ashore as a severe tropical cyclone. It is best in a situation to, uh, like this to be over-prepared than under-prepared. So especially around X Mount and Coral Bay, expect a severe tropical cyclone to come ashore. Considering it is going to be a lot further offshore than what we were expecting initially, I don't think the storm surge threat in the X Mount Gulf is going to be too high at this point, but expect a storm tide of around a foot to two feet above the highest astronomical tide marker. So there is still the risk of coastal inundation as well. Now we're going to jump across to our friends over in Queensland and northern New South Wales. We've got a bit to talk about there in terms of thunderstorm activity. That's going to start to materialise Friday night, or late into Friday night by the looks of things, Saturday morning and then into Saturday afternoon and evening. It looks like we get some very nice juicy thunderstorm activity in northern New South Wales and also for southeast Queensland. It doesn't look like anything too severe here, but you can see the Axis G3 has initialised quite the band of thunderstorms to be moving through. The Axis being a convective model generally overdoes these thunderstorms about two days out, but tomorrow expect a detailed forecast on these storms because some of these could go severe uh, with the risk of heavy rainfall, large hailstones and damaging winds, maybe even tornadoes as well. It looks like these storms might try and go supercell. So this is going to be a very interesting thing to watch as well. And a lot of rainfall expected through here as well. Northern New South Wales around uh, Coffs Harbour up towards Byron Bay. Well, not Coffs Harbour, that's way down south. But up towards Byron Bay, you're looking at maybe about 100 millimetres or so. And maybe even in one or two pockets up to 150 millimetres. So the heavy rainfall risk here is definitely there. It's going to be a wet bunch of thunderstorms that move through. And they will drop quite a substantial amount of rainfall by the looks of things. Could also bring the risk of damaging winds and also some large hailstones. Now, we've also got to talk about some rain 
rainfall for northern Queensland. I forgot to mention this at the start of the video, but we will be taking a look at the rainfall situation up here. It's going to be a rather wet one, up to 100 millimetres expected today throughout the rest of Thursday and into Friday, especially from this evening. We get this low pressure system kind of develop just offshore here. Not a cyclone risk, might I add, but we can see some uh, onshore flow action through here moving in towards Cairns and the Daintree Rainforest. Now that's going to result in some pretty significant rainfall accumulations by the looks of things. And I'm sorry, I forgot to put my messaging app to do not disturb, so I do apologize for all the things in the background. But you can see onshore quite a bit of rainfall expected over the next three days, up to 250 or 300 millimeters in one or two locations, just around Cairns, Innisfail, Belendon Kerr, that sort of area. Maybe even one or two spots picking up more than 300 millimeters of rain, maybe up to four or 500 millimeters in the right valley. So this is definitely going to be a significant amount of rainfall over the next three days. And then over the next five days, it looks like that rainfall only jumps up even further, four to 500 millimeters or so in one or two locations. But that just does look like it's a bit of rainfall very early next week. So it's gonna be a rather wet weekend and Friday for this part of tropical North and Queensland. Apart from that, nothing too significant on the rainfall uh, front for the next 10 days or so. And nothing too significant on the rainfall front for the next 10 days across Australia. Apart from uh, tropical Western Australia, their wet season has been well and truly sprung into high gear with the passage of ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln. And we're going to take a look at that now because we see a tropical low develop north of Darwin and there's been hints all week of something developing up in the Gulf of Carpentaria in the Coral Sea. It's now swung itself over towards Darwin and the Arafura Sea, and you can see it really does give itself a good crack at developing, but it doesn't look like it gets up towards cyclone status at all. We do see a little bit of a Coral Sea swirl starting to happen through here, but again, not a risk, not a threat at all. But yeah, by the end of next week, it looks like we've got a developing tropical low that's dumping a lot of rainfall across northwest and western Australia, um, the Kimberley region or so, and maybe even parts of the Pilbara region. And we could be seeing some pretty significant rainfall accumulation out of this, especially around Darwin, up to 400 millimetres off Melville Island. Yeah, maybe up to two to 300 millimetres up in northern western Australia, up in the Kimberley region or so. One or two spots might pick up 400 millimetres, and that's associated from the tropical low that's expected to form around the Melville Island, Darwin sort of area that will move through the Northern Territory and then into Western Australia. The forecast in this system is still relatively uncertain, but we'll get the details ironed out for us in the next sort of five days or so. And after that, we'll have a very good idea on what's expected to happen or what won't happen at all. Now, a lot of rainfall up here in uh, Western Australia. This is a bit of a concern considering 600 millimetres in two weeks is up to a year's worth of rainfall for locations, especially around Fitzroy Crossing, Halls Creek, Balgo. And that's maybe up to a year and a half worth of rainfall so a lot of rainfall expected to fall through here and that will definitely be pushing rivers such as the Fitzroy towards their minor to moderate flooding alert so if you live in a flood prone area keep a very close eye on the weather forecast and prepare as necessary uh, just to make sure that you are safe and sound from floodwaters that might go through your area also it looks like a bit of rain down towards Perth for Sunday uh, which would be some absolutely great news that'd be a, a, truly a godsend by Sunday we really need some rain down here and I'm very excited to see some rainfall on Sunday and that's associated with what will be the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln again finally wrapping up his marathon voyage across Australia it's definitely had a pretty good run that storm if it makes it down in towards Western Australia as a remnant low it looks like the heat will finally start to ease off of Perth it's gonna be 40 degrees tomorrow but after that it looks like it drops back to 31 or 32 for the next 10 days which is just pleasant it'd be nice if the nights were maybe one or two degrees cooler like 16 17 or 18 instead of 20 and 22 and so forth but the nights I won't be complaining about. It's just these days. I don't want to see 42 or 43 again for at least a year. It's been horrible weather, that's for sure. I just never remember sweating so much. It's been gross. It's been disgusting. And I'm so, so, so glad that it is finally coming to an end because by March, I mean, you, the edge of the heat really starts to get taken off uh, then. We don't really see 40 degree days in March. 38 happens every now and then, but 40 doesn't happen. And I know to all the northerners, that's it. I'm whinging over what would be an average day but 40 degrees down in Perth is it's quite a warm day it's uh, definitely a beach day at that point 42 is hot it's bloody hot at 42 and 42 you could kind of compare it to a 48 up towards Marble Bar it's a hot day it is um, and yeah we've been seeing 43 44 people just aren't used to this kind of heat uh, but it does happen every now and then it 
it, it does happen. It happens every couple of years where we see this really hot run materialize in Perth. I can remember a few in my lifetime and I haven't been around here for too long. Anyway, so that is the latest from me. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's been great having your company this morning. Hope you have a great day and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.